we now come to new clause 7 with which it will be convenient to consider the other new clauses and amendments listed on the selection paper. Mr Roger Mullen, Mullen to move new clause 7. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And to those with little knowledge of Scottish limited partnerships, it may seem strange that I rise in this House to move new clause 7 in my name and in those of my colleagues. But despite what the name may suggest, Scottish limited partnerships have little connection to Scotland and none to the Scottish Parliament. They were introduced in 1907 by the Chancellor of the day, Herbert Asquith. And despite rumours to the contrary, I was not present at the debates at the time. <laughs> uh, it is certainly true that the, the regulation, the operation and the dissolution of SLPs remain the exclusive preserve of Westminster hence raising this new clause in this House. Scottish limited partnerships have their own distinct legal personality, and there is a, as a result they can, for example, hold assets, borrow money and enter into contracts. However, Asquith could never have foreseen that they would become a financial vehicle abused by international criminals and tax dodgers. Great credit must go to the journalists of the Herald newspaper particularly David Leask, for doggedly uncovering the truth about SLPs. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it good that for once we can praise journalism of the highest <laughs> order, delving into important matters rather than merely dealing in tittle-tattle? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although so, some users of SLPs no doubt operate appropriately and responsibly, it is claimed that up to 95% of them are mere tax evasion vehicles, and including for criminal assets. SLPs, while they may be registered in Scotland, are often owned by partners based in the Caribbean or other jurisdictions, which ensure ownership, secrecy and low or no tax regimes. People operating outside the UK are exploiting opaque ownership structures to hide their true ownership. As Oxfam too have recently pointed out, Brokers in countries like Ukraine and Belarus are specifically marketing SLPs as Scottish 0% tax firms. And the number of SLPs has been growing apace. Data from Companies House, and revealed again by the Herald, shows 25,000 were in place by the autumn of 2015, and that new registrations have been increasing by 40% year on year since 2008. To give an example of what can happen, in 2014 allegations emerged that SLPs had been used to funnel $1 billion out of banks in the, forward, in the former Soviet Republic of Moldova. The use of an SLP and a bank account in an EU country allows dodgy groups from, for example, the ex-Soviet Union the ability to move or their ill-gotten gains to tax havens under the cloak of respectability. I am aware that the Scottish Government's Finance Secretary, Derek Mackay, has recently written to the UK Government on SLPs. He has sensibly pointed out that, and I quote from his letter, it is critical that due diligence checks are able to be made when SLPs are initially registered and when there are changes in partners and that penalties are imposed on partners where the SLP does not comply with the relevant legislation. He went on to point out that the threat of serious to organised crime does not respect borders, and with a significant increase of cybercrime, it is essential that we take every step open to us to reduce this threat as much as possible. To that end, our amendment seeks an urgent review of SLPs and also seeks a review that will, very importantly, include taking evidence from the Scottish Government, from HMRC and from interested charities. We have crafted this amendment in the hope it can attract cross-party support. I can see no reason why anyone would wish to oppose a review of this nature. I cannot see anyone other than, of course, those who are interested in encouraging criminality or tax evasion. 
And so I would urge the Minister to, Minister to accept our new clause. I should also like to pass comment on the amendment in the name of the Right Honourable Lady for Don Valley. It, I hope you'll forgive me if I missed him saying it, but I don't think I did. In sub two of his new clause, it says, quote, the review must take into account the views of the Scottish Government, HMRC and interested charities. Is it to do with the nature of SLPs that that amendment does not include the Government of Wales, the Government of Northern Ireland? They are technically registered. They will be registered in Scotland, but what they will have is ownership in tax havens throughout the world and operate differently, given the way it was set up in 1907, which is, as far as I am aware, it has never been reviewed since then in any significant detail. But I, th I thank the Honourable Member for his intervention. Certainly. He's, he's making a powerful case that some of these SLPs are used for criminal or money laundering purposes, but these are serious crimes which should be reported. Has he reported them? Isn't this an enforcement issue? I think it's certainly a very important issue, but I think uh, wouldn't it be better if we could get the government to do the detailed scrutiny to enable them to enact the kind of uh, action that is necessary? I think their voice in this would be far more powerful than my own. Uh, anyway, as I turn to the uh, Honourable Lady for Don Valley and say that we shall be supporting her amendment, I'm sure she will have much more to say about it, but hers is a very modest amendment. Uh, give, uh, encouraging much needed country by country reporting of corporations. And I look forward to hearing her remarks, but she can be assured that she has the full support of these benches for her actions. And similarly, we hope that the uh, opposition will be moving their new clause 13, uh, uh, which we will also intend to support. This whole section dealing with tax evasion is very important. And it is very important that the UK as a whole lives up to its responsibilities in making sure that we do not become uh, 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 filled or covered by the name of encouraging tax dodgers at a time in uh, uh, th this time in our country. Here, here. If I could just mention the remarkable and brave journalist Roberto Saviano, who has been admired for exposing the murderous criminal underworld of the Italian Mafia. He recently, writing in an article in The Telegraph, warned that the UK financial world was effectively allowing what he called criminal capitalism to thrive. Surely we must start today and ensure that that is not the case. New Clause 7, Review of Tax Treatment of Scottish Limited Partnerships. The question is that the new clause be read a second time.